Antoine Dupont, is he just arguably the greatest player in the world now? And the only reason I'm saying that is we've seen now the French 15 side turn into what we can only be described as a disaster, whereas the mm-hmm. French 7 side actually took out bronze in, in Vancouver this morning with Dupont starting to play more and more a role in there. So, so the question has to be, was Dupont France? Is France... No good without the pont. Like we've just witnessed a, a thirteen all draw that realistically should have been a loss if a ball doesn't fall off a tee yep. and it's well, if, get there if the top. rules are followed. If the rules are followed, <laughs> come on to that in it. Come on to that in a minute. But I also want to say I have been a big Dupont advocate for a long time on this podcast. Right? I said uh, last year that he was one of the most important players of the the World Cup, and. You know, the question is, does France get as far as they do if DuPont doesn't play in that World Cup? I think you look at this, how this uh, Six Nations is gone for for France, and you could maybe say, well, maybe not. You know, maybe they maybe they don't even have a competitive quarterfinal. Maybe they don't make the quarterfinal. You know, it is. uh, I I feel very vindicated in seeing France from last year compared to this year, and then France in the Six Nations now of seeing. Yes, this is. You know, there's there's always a question of it, of what is the greatest player and what is the most valuable player. You know, I think those are two actually very separate things. Or and even what is the most talented player? Because there are some players that just transform a team, and they might not be the best player in the world. They might not even be the best player on their own team, but they are the most valuable for what they bring to their team. So I think you could very confidently say that DuPont is the most valuable player in the world because he elevates that French squad to a, a top four team in the world to a, to an ultra competitive side that has the ability to, to beat South Africa and New Zealand uh, in, in test matches without him, France aren't the same. They are not the same team. Uh, and look, a 13 all draw against Italy that they're lucky it's a draw. They're lucky it is only uh, 13-13. I think goes a long way to prove that. And I think DuPont will, will, whenever he makes his return to the the 50 and a start game, will be welcomed by his teammates with the most open arms possible. Yeah. uh, I I know. I couldn't agree more. And I just go, what? I was I I was probably less on the train that you were on the, du, the, the mm. Dupont train because I didn't I just I, you know I thought the French team were good and I thought the French team yep. as a team were good I didn't think it was just Dupont but now what I'm seeing and I know yes there was a red card I know they had a red card against Ireland but even against Scotland they they got lucky against Scotland they've got lucky again here I go mm. they're three games in into a Arguably, uh, Six Nations, I thought they went in as pretty big favourites, hosting Ireland at home mm. with the games that they were playing, um, thought that they could get a job done. And they just haven't looked like... They've looked like a shell of that team that won the World Cup. They've looked like a shell of that team that went on a winning streak and bet the All Blacks. They just don't look that. And I know um, Intermark's out as well. But again, there's some talented players there. And it's just not clicking. And I don't know. I, I've always had mm. this question of France. I never thought they were as good as they were, um, but I didn't think they were this bad. I didn't think they were, you know, succumbing to draws against Italy and and yeah. and um, absolute disaster against the uh, Irish. So, look, there's going to be arguments now. If Dupont leads this French team to a gold in in Paris, which look. I mean, it, it's a massive task, and it's not only because yeah. you're competing against the like New Zealand teams, Fiji's, the team that Argentina are currently putting out. Argentina have won the last three tournaments, sevens tournaments for the men's. Like Argentina, are the team to beat at the moment on the seven circuit. So I go, it's going to be a tough task for Dupont. It's not out of the realm of his possibility with whatever or whatever he does to escalate his teams or to to lift his teams up. But yeah, look. I, I, I just I just I'm blown away by what has happened to France since he's left and what what has happened to the Sevens program since he's gone. Um but let's get on to kind of the Six Nations. There was a couple other games, but you want to talk a bit more about the Italy and the moment there with the missed penalty, my friend. Yes. Uh there's been a lot of media put out uh about this. 
Uh, and please step in if, if you if you see anything wrong with this here. But I believe the kick at the end of the game, it was a penalty kick. It's a penalty kick. Correct. Now, you're not allowed to rush penalty kicks. As far as I was, as far as I thought, you're not allowed to rush the penalty kicks. Even if the, because we had this moment a few weeks back with Wales and England, you know, um, and the whole kerfuffle about when does the runner start to make his approach. And we clarified the rule on that, but that's just for goal kicks. For penalty kicks, no matter when he starts his run up or anything like that, you can't chase it down. It's a, they must be allowed to take an unobstructed kick. In addition to that, the French had a non-player on the field as well. They had a water boy on the field, which I also believe you're not allowed to do in a penalty. It's not a break in the game. It's a penalty. So, uh, and then there was a, th- a kerfuffle to do with the shot clock as well about how much time was it taken to do the kick because the ball fell off the tee and, and everything like that. The last one, the clock issue is a separate one. However, when the ball slipped off the tee, the French players started to run towards the ball. They still had a water boy on the field. For me, you should stop the clock there and restart it again once the ball is on the tee and then uh, and the, the water boy has left the field. You can't be expected... You, you can't take your time, the legal time off the clock for a player to take a kick when the other team is not complying with the rules. That would be like if a French player was standing in front of the ball over the tee and the referee said, oh, you've got uh, 20 seconds to kick this. It's like, well, no, there's a, there's a giant bearded Frenchman in the way. You know, <laughs> it's, So for me, I feel Italy were very hard done by there. I think they were very, very hard done by. And I think the referee, this is one of those rare occasions where I would have rather have seen the referee stop proceedings and put their stamp on the game than allow things to continue the way that they were. Yeah, there's a couple of things, and I've, I've seen all the reviews and, and the breakdowns of it. Um, I It's hard. It's a hard point because the shot clock's relatively new. So mm. there was a lot happening in that last minute. The ball comes off the tee. Players don't know what exactly is the rules off that and I, I totally understand that. Um it is it is a, a front rower who's who's made a couple of steps. I'm not gonna hide away from the fact that it's a big lad, so not a lot going on in the old top two inches there. So look, I understand that to me, and again this might be a little bit of a controversial take, but when the clock hits eighty minutes or the penalty kick is going to go into eighty minutes I don't think there should be a shot clock. Now, the reason I say that is we lost a really... You know those moments where you sit there and you go, 80 minutes into the game, Italy have won a penalty. Oh, my God, this kicks to win the game. The more time that goes on, the more pressure it is on the kicker, in my mind. Like, yeah. I just think those are those moments you want You're not highlighted. wasting any time. No, like, yeah, exactly. Like, the game's over no matter what. Like So, to me, there was that. But, again, I understand... The counter-argument to that is, well, if it's happening during the game, why not keep it during the end? I, I, I understand it, but I just think when clock hits 80 minutes, that like that kick, that was a moment that should have been held and we should have been watching our TVs and glued to our televisions. It shouldn't have been, the ball's come off the tee, he's got 10 seconds to get it back on and get a kick away. Um, so that, that was my thing on the shot clock. For the step forward, I think, yeah, look, I understand it. Again, I think the ref will go back and go, look, in the end, a wrong decision. I don't think the French were inadvertently trying to cheat the game like they they were only stepping forward because the balls come off the tee, which I yeah. again isn't is, is not a part of the rules. But there's been, like you've said, there's been so much like this previously that there, there's a lot going on with rugby around those rules. Where I I'm not I'm, I don't think French were trying to cheat the sh- system here. Yeah, I but, I agree with that. I don't think it was malicious by the yeah. French. I think it was unintentional but that's why you have the referee there so, to to fill in those gaps in player knowledge as well and to, to adjudicate it correctly like, i don't think the french were saying oh we'll just rush it anyway you know we're not allowed to do it you're right it was a big big boy you know um <laughs> it's a they, they don't they don't often come into contact with kicking situations right so i think it's uh i don't think it was malicious by the french so yeah. i don't I don't lay the blame with the French for this. With the water boy part of it, I feel like that's something that the coaches should know about when they can and can't send water and training personnel onto the field. And again, that's another one where the referee should have stepped in all the touchies and said, hey, that's not allowed. 
again, though, I don't think it was the French being malicious, like, right? I don't yeah. think it was them being like, um, we got to get an advantage here any way we can. I think it was, it, you know, it's at the end of an 80 minute game. It's tied up, you know, you're just trying to get your players some hydration because who knows what happens off the kick. Uh, so I don't think it was malicious. I think it was just, they just didn't know the rules, but, and then the referee didn't do their job by adjudicating it, by putting their authority on the game in a moment where they should have. It's one of the one of the few moments that we've seen where we actually are, we want to hear the referee's voice in this situation. Yeah, and it, it, it took me back to uh, an All Blacks versus Ireland game not too long ago, 2013, I believe it was, where the All Blacks got a re-kick after Aaron Cruden do, does this little thing where he does steps bef- on like, on the spot before he goal kicks. Mm. So the Irish charged early, he missed the goal kick, and then got the chance to retake the goal kick. And as controversial as that is, it was the right decision because they charged early. Um, and this is another moment where, as controversial as it may have been, it's the right decision. If we look back at the Melbourne Cricket Ground with Wallabies versus New Zealand, you know, time wasting call on that. As much as it's a controversial decision, it's a correct decision. Um, and this would have been exactly the same in my opinion, where mm. we would have sat there and there would have been a lot of discussion over it, and it's a big call for a ref to make, but it, it is the right call. Um, but again, I'm yeah. not I'm not on the ref too much because. Again, there's a lot that's happening. There's a lot, you know, like as you said, the rest, of, the rest of human too. It was an 80 minute game. I don't think he was not trying. Like I think he was so focused on letting the kicker know. Again, it came to the shot clock. Hey, you've only got 10 seconds left. You've got to get a kick off. Then he was yeah. focused on the French team. So look, there was a, so many parts to play in in that. That yes, Italy deserved the second kick, but also I I think there's more to the game there we, we can discuss about. Hey. When it gets to the eighty minute mark, let them take as long yeah. as they want. Like it's a it's a goal kick to win the game. It shouldn't be down to a time thing now. But yeah, yeah. And let's and let's also highlight because we've been uh, critical of Italy and the Six Nations and you know how they've performed. Um, and it's, and in a week where there were actual questions in the media about does Italy belong in the Six Nations, and Ange Capuozzo was actually in the media saying, you know, there were years where some of these other teams in the Six Nations were absolute horseshit for decades as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just building, you've got to give us a chance. I think it's a really strong performance to Italy to come out there and and show up and really um, make a statement. I think it's a statement game from, from Italy, you know, and I think that this is – uh, you know, two. You know, think about this. Italy could be two and one in the Six Nations right now. Lost by three points to England and tied with France. Right. So they, they've got to be. They, they they're getting there. It, it, and arguably, this should have been a win. It's it's hard though to to you know. It's like in you know, how many of these do, do they get? I think this is an an impressive win, an impressive draw that should have been a win. But the fact that it's not a win. That's all that's going to be remembered down history. That's, that's all that's going to show up in the record book. That is exactly what my counter argument was. This they French had a red card. When you've got a man advantage for as long as they had, the counter argument has to be you have to win those games. No matter what you do, you win those games. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's come out as a draw again, again they were up against England at halftime, lost that game. I go look, we can we can understand that an Irish are, are beating everybody, so we can un, we can take that one away. But the, the two chances that they've had. They've blown, and mm. if they want to be considered good enough, the the thing I I think about Italy at the moment is you have a rugby world cup that was miserable, a hundred just about a hundred point loss to the All Blacks. You aren't just fighting for your right to stay in the Six Nations. You're fighting for people to sit there and believe you're still a Tier 1 nation because after that yeah. whooping in the World Cup, that's what you're fighting for. And so I sit here and I go, you had a chance to right the wrongs of what a Rugby World Cup was, and both times you've cracked under the pressure. Um, be it controversially this last one and against England, it's just, I, to me, when are Italy going to start winning those games? Like this, they've never beat France in France in a Six Nations game. This was their opportunity, and, and, and I'm going to say they blew it. Like, as much yeah. as you've got a man advantage, you know, you, you can say, oh, look, they're competitive. France haven't looked good against anyone. This has been a... Look, we can make this argument now. This is a weak front French team, lucky to beat Scotland, blown away mm. by Ireland, um, and again here with Italy. And yes, they're ill-disciplined. So, yeah, look, uh, to me, Italy, they're, 
they've got many opportunities. They've got to take them. That like this is it. it's that yeah. point where you go. Well, the under 18s team beat the French under 18s team. So, so there's a new generation. There's a, the next well. generation coming through. Exactly, they're building building well. It's then translating that to success at the top level, which is the which is the real challenge. Definitely, and um, around the grounds, uh, Italy, uh, Ireland. The charge continues. They beat Wales. Yeah. They see. This is the thing. You look at France in the World Cup, and you look at Ireland at the World Cup. Ireland are still taking the step in the right direction. If you know what I mean, like yep. Ireland. This is the same Ireland team we've always known. Like uh, someone put in a comment on our last um, breakdown of the of the first two games that we disrespected Ireland, which we probably did a little because we didn't talk much about them. But I, the reason we're not talking about them is. This is what we expect from Ireland now. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I have standard. I have no doubt now. After they beat France, I said this game's going to come down to that last Scotland game, and it might not even yep. matter with the way they're running through teams and bonus points. I don't see Ireland losing. I just go this Irish yep. team is built different now. This is this Irish team reminds me a lot of those early twenty tens uh, New Zealand teams where they just win games, they dominate you, they play their style, and that's what I'm seeing from this Ireland team. So th- they mm-hmm. did it again against Wales. Wales tackled their hearts out again. Another Gatlin like performance, but um, Ireland's roll on on the hunt for a Six Nations yeah. Grand Slam. Exactly, it could be could be another one for them. They look, and we we come to our final game. Uh, well, we had Scotland beating England once more in a, in a great game, cracking game. Uh, I think that's going to be Ireland's greatest challenge. Uh, the Six Nations is that is that Scotland game, you know. Um, England, uh, England have been. It's 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 you know they, they've won two games, but they've won against Italy and Wales, and they weren't bad against Scotland. But they are uh, coming into now their toughest game. Um, and I just don't think that they're I, – I think they're just – this is definitely a transition year for them. This is not a year that they are going to be, uh, you know, a, a top team, a a, a world-beating team. This is where they're – you know, last year was moving on from Eddie and scrambling to, 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 to compete in a World Cup. This year is about, okay, what's our plan for the upcoming years – who are our players that we're going to send on the British and Irish Lions tour, build towards the next World Cup, totally. um, and so that's what they're they that's what they're doing this year. And you know, I think that's I I, I get the, I think that's just what England's just going to have to suffer a little bit through is, you know, moving on from some of their old stalwarts and moving into uh, bringing on some newer younger talent. Yeah, I agree. I think they they. They again weren't bad against Scotland. They had moments, but they haven't. They're, they're lacking polish at the moment, and I yep. think it's going to take a, a year or two under Borfoot to find that polish. So, look, I'm not. Mm. I'm definitely. I'm. I'm excited for where England rugby is heading. I think they're heading in the right direction yep. under Borfoot. They've just got to find it. For so Scotland, I it's going to annoy the fuck out of me because I predicted this tournament to go this way. Um, I said if if France if that try against France was allowed. And Scotland, you know, win again uh, against, I think they've got Italy next week, Ireland win against yeah. England. We were down for the, arguably going to be the biggest game in the Six Nations. Could have been the biggest international mm-hmm. game this year. Scotland against Ireland, in Ireland for the Six Nations and a Grand Slam. And now we don't get that. Um, it, yeah. It's heartbreaking. But Scotland looking good again. Scotland's uh, Duhan Vermeulen is just a beast. Yeah. Um, no, it's not Duhan Vermeulen, it's Duhan and of murder. Um, I knew who you meant. <laughs> yeah, um, scoring a hat trick, three um, tries. Yeah. yeah. So look, Scotland looking good. They need England to help them out now and beat Ireland, which is very unrealistic, very unlikely. But yeah. if they can hold them to a non-bonus point, then it'll come down to some calculations. But I still think Ireland yeah. um, run away with this. I think I think England could finish the Six Nations. Um, Three wins, two losses. I think they've got a very realistic chance of beating France. Oh, 100%. Uh, the way France is looking, they might not win another game. I don't know who they've got left. Mm. I think they've got Wales. They've got, and- they got Wales Wales next. Um, in Wales, I believe. Mm. Yes, Millennium Stadium. And then um, they finish off against England in France. Yeah, so look, France, they've got a couple, that's a couple of games for France to right their wrongs and prove us especially wrong. But um, for now... 
not looking good. But that is our Six Nations Week free review by the sports booth. Um, let us know in the comments if you think we're wrong, if you think DuPont is the greatest player ever and most influential player to step on a rugby field. Um, and make sure you like and subscribe for now. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Peace. Thank you.